Hi, my name is Giovanni Lopez. I'm so excited to be here with you today and talk about GenSpace and the FIT GenSpace programs, as well as some of the students that have been previous alums and some of their cool projects. So to begin, I want to just um, tell you a little bit about myself since I will be the main person helping you in the lab. My background is in biochemistry, but I have uh, came to New York to study material chemistry at NYU. But um, I think if there's one thing you should know about me is that I love exploring these ideas, whether it is like making a microscope out of a DVD player, um, playing with microfluidics, 3D printing, just working on um, all sorts of things in, in the fields of uh, biology, chemistry, physics. Uh, I love it all. And I really look forward to working with the, this next year's um, cohort of FIT GenSpace scholars. So uh, let's get into uh, talking about GenSpace. So GenSpace um, really is, is, a, is a very interesting place. Um, it came about from a meeting between a artist, a journalist, and a scientist. Like, it sounds like a bad joke, an artist, a journalist, and a scientist, you know, walk into a Brooklyn uh, living room. But uh, something that they all shared in common was um, this passion for exploring biotechnology. They felt like they needed a space to do that, not only for themselves, but also for the community at large. Um, and um, that idea later became GenSpace. GenSpace is the world's first community bio biology lab where um, they want to be a place for everyone to have a chance to access science, um, not only in the textbook level, but more specifically in the laboratory level. And we want to not only um, have it for everyone, but also be a part of the community. Uh, and I think the secret sauce or the thing that makes GenSpace really special is that this kind of place kind of draws a lot of people from different perspectives with different professions, with different ideas. Um, it brings them all together and it gives you such a potent mix of viewpoints that you can come in with an idea looking at it in a certain way and leave looking at it a completely different way, just being exposed to this community or this amalgam of ideas that that really is transformational in, in just kind of changing the way that you think of things. Um, whether or not you talk to an artist, whether or not you talk to a scientist, you know, or even a high school student, like it's being exposed to different ideas, is such a such a strong attribute that GenSpace has, GenSpace has to offer. Um, and it's it's a very special place. Here is our biology lab. It's a fully stock molecular biology lab that has all the basics from uh, giving you a clean place to work with all our sterilization equipments or our clean hoods as well as having uh, incubators galore to grow anything that you want at different temperatures to the tools to basically modify organisms to make certain proteins whether or not it's a pigment or a fluorescent protein or just something to add to a fiber to strengthen it. Um, you can do it here at GenSpace. So I'll take a second to show you the lab. Hello, I'm currently here at GenSpace and we can start this small tour uh, by looking to my left. Um, here we have the basic electronic station. So if you needed to work with anything electronics, we have an oscilloscope, uh, various DC power supplies, multimeters, a soldering station, uh, a heat gun, a um, 3D printer if you need it to make molds, uh, but let me take you where the magic happens. Inside of our uh, office space, there's also a lab. And um, this is GenSpace lab. In the back, we can see our minus 80. Our minus 80 holds our library of organisms, anything that makes pigments or um, proteins or even uh, fluorescent proteins that come from jellyfish. We have microorganisms that have those special modifications in there. So if you want to play around with them, we have them. If we don't have them, we can order them and house them in our minus 80. If you're working with biologicals, we have a autoclave, which will, think, which will keep everything nice and sterile. If you want a sterile environment to work in, we also have a clean hood, which kind of filters the air and avoids contamination that way. So we have the basics as far as a lab, which includes the consumables. But we also have the basics in a molecular biology lab, which include um, instruments like 
the TCR, which amplifies DNA. We have centrifuges um, that will help you purify the DNA and maybe make new mutations to certain types of DNA. We have incubators galore. If you want, if you have microorganisms that like to grow at 37 degrees, 30, 25, um, we have incubators for that as well. Um, we also have a plate reader, a quantitative PCR, and a spectrophotometer to get concentrations of, uh, of our um, stocks and solutions. Um, and just basically all the reagents that you'll need. Uh, we have three working benches that are fully stocked with everything that you'll need. So you can experiment to your heart's content. So I hope one of you watching this video uh, gets a chance to come visit to our space uh, as an FIT Gen Space Scholar. I think now more than ever is like the moment for sustainable design, uh, specifically biodesign. Um, Never in, in history has there been so many ideas so readily available, such a, a hunger for it. Um, for example, the biodesign challenge, you know, is, is challenging people to, you know, come up with new ideas that have never been thought before and really push the envelope. And actually the, the biodesign came from Genspace so as, as, as one example, but um, there's other places that are just troves of information for, from like arena to, um, uh, I, I'm blanking on the name, but the website where you can get the recipes for bioplastics. Um, there's just such an influx of information. And um, it's really the combination of art, sciences, engineering, and design all coming together to kind of push what can be done or what has never been done before. And kind of using nature as inspiration, as a collaborator, as, as you know, something to, to kind of reintegrate back to the synthetic world. And I think uh, sustainable design is something that um, Genspace has been doing for quite a while. Um, something that comes to mind is our um, expressive matter group. They are focused on exploring and creating, innovating different types of materials by looking at how they, the biology works and the design, we can fix with the design or uh, augment design. And uh, we slowly want to move away from these uh, unsustainable synthetic, you know, oil-based products to, to make naturally products that would degrade and not last, you know, hundreds if not thousands of years in the landfills. Um, they work with bioplastics, with composites, and, and really try to push what they can do, how they uh, mold and what types of uh, things it could be used for. Um, so our, our, our roots, in biodesign and sustainability are really, really solid as far as uh, uh, us here at Genspace. And I think that's kind of what drew uh, this collaboration between FIT and Genspace. You know, we have the biology and we want to, you know, we have this emphasis in, in making it sustainable. Um, and I think the testament to that is some of the alums that come out of here. One in particular, um, among among others is uh, Valentina Gomez. She uh, wanted to explore fibers and how you cross-link them and how you can make them uh, more sustainable, natural, and basically using biology as, as a collaborator. She explored um, how you can use microbes to change them different colors or how you can add different proteins to them or merge these proteins. And she came up with the, the design of basically um, putting these dyes or fluorescent uh, markers inside of these uh, E. coli and extracting them and putting them into the fibers and, um, you know, making these synthetic high performance fibers, sorry, not synthetic, these natural fibers, high performance fibers, and then later became these, uh, this company called Werewolf. And they're, they're really doing great. Um, another project that comes to mind of how Genspace tries to help with sustainability is the Stephanie Sickles project. Um, she uh, was working with bacterial cellulose, and she was uh, exploring how you can, first of all, sew with it, but second of all, make it more sustainable. She realized that, hey, we're using commercial sugars that are exploiting sugar canes, uh, like th that whole unsustainable practice of shipping sugar canes. So she said, can we use local waste streams um, or byproducts of local things like breweries? Can we use that to feed these kombuchas and make it even more sustainable, you know, in making this um, this bacterial leather 
uh, much more useful. So here at GenSpace, we explored, okay, uh, what byproducts from say a brewery can you use? And what one temperatures and what pHs can you like optimize? So how can you optimize this to make it, um, you know, more sustainable? And uh, my uh, big tip of the hat to Stephanie Stickle for for really pushing that sustainability and, and exploring it, which is which is absolutely great. Uh, another interesting project was from um, Amy, um, and it's very interesting because. When we look, for example, at this orange here in the bottom, and that we might see that it's, you know, just spoilage and, and you know, toss it into the trash. But uh, Amy, what you saw was, was the color there. And, and I guess her question was, can we use that as a, some kind of pigment? Like, why is it that color? Can we use it as a pigment? Is it something that we can grow? So uh, Amy decided to use Aspergillus to see if she could, um, Use a pigment. Use that as a pigment. Harness that. Harness that as a pigment. I know specifically the the darker black pigment is really hard to to manufacture synthetically, and it's very very toxic. So, can we make a natural alternative to this pigment? So, here at JetSpace, we worked on doing this safely and going by going about it in a way where we can test different conditions to see if we can get better staining. Whether it is growing it with the with the um, with the types of aspergillus, growing at different conditions for different amounts of time, different pHs, uh, to see what would be the overall um, pigmentation we can get on these on these swatches. So that's a really incredible, fascinating, um, just idea process. Not something that I would think of, but you know, again, this merger of different ideas is, is what GenSpace is about. So. Uh, you heard me talk about some of these ideas, but we've also were were thankful enough to get some um, some people giving some testimonials about their time in the program. And I think I want to highlight the last couple of minutes uh, and give them the floor to to kind of speak about it. Um, we haven't recorded, so I just added here. Um, it's just a brief intro on Antahia. She um, worked with kom kombucha or cellulose fiber in the lab, and I think she really loved it. But um, I'll let her tell that story. Hi everyone, my name is Tahia Hussein, and I am currently the sustainability expert at Adidas London. I started the FIT Gen Space Scholars program in the spring of 2018 during my junior year. Being a designer, we're often intimidated by, you know, people who come from the other side of the world when it comes to science and math and all that. And I feel like having that space where it felt encouraged for us to have these relationships was really beneficial because. I had so many questions. My journey started by me growing this dress out of bacterial leather. And I grew this dress, I had fully sewn it and it became a complete garment. And bringing it to Gen Space allowed me to ask questions as to how and why I could do this. And some of my favorite people that were during, or that were there during the program Will and Rachel, they were both very hands-on with the members that were starting this program. And I felt very, very encouraged to put myself out there and act, actually share my project and talk about it and have these opportunities to really show what fashion or the future of fashion could be through science and having this collaborative space and i think is what our future innovation is going to be like and that is exactly what biodesign is and it allowed me to open up a whole new world because i saw more than just fashion all of a sudden i saw i saw materials that can be grown and sourced from you know organisms around us biological organisms organisms that can really create our future materials in our future industry and you're already seeing this within industry projects a big one being you know like pineapple leather bacterial leather dyes and solutions that are overtaking or alternatives that are being replaced on on top of our chemical and toxic dyes that we're so used to seeing and i think that's the change we need now and 
what FIT Gen Space Scholars Program does is give you that space to ask these questions. And so with that being said, yes, I would highly, highly recommend this program to FIT Scholars because it'll, it'll be the starting point of your career if you wish to go down this path. Or if you're just curious, this is definitely a foundation base for you. So another person that I also want to share their story of is uh, Jonathan Matier. He came to us, I think, in 2019, 2018, and he was exploring uh, different types of uh, performance foams and gels for athletic shoes. And I'll let him talk a little bit about his experience. Hello, my name is Jonathan Matier. I'm here to talk to you about my experience at Genspace. Genspace provided an area to learn outside of fashion while still maintaining the ability to implement those ideas with an artistic vision. I spent my time within Genspace studying biofoams and learning to construct my own. With the guidance of mentors and helpful people around Genspace, I was able to create a biofoam that meets standards used for modern shoes today. This opportunity did not stop there. I was then selected for an FIT MIT accelerator program where I continued my studies. Now I am currently working on my own business with my brother and my friend. We currently 3D print a multitude of things while still developing our own biofoam further so we can sell the biofoam to artists and designers under the same brand, Donja Designs. I wish you the best with your opportunity and I thank you for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day. So again, thank you so much for listening to me uh, and hearing more about Genspace, the FIT Genspace program. Please visit us anytime at genspace.org or contact us directly at info at genspace.org. Um, if you have any questions, there will be a small Q&A with me um, after the presentation. But thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.